Welcome to yaymath.org and a special edition of Yaymath in Studio, where I've invited my twin here, also known <laughs> as my dad, to join us for a little math learning lesson um, on a whim. I invited you last night to come here. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Glad to be here. Yeah, this is kind of cool. Right. Yeah. You know what I, you know why I invited you? I was thinking about the first math memories that I have with you. Do you recall that seventh and eighth grade? Mr. Deligani. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Deliganis. Yeah, yes. that my invitation to go from the at level class to the honors class was in eighth grade. And uh, we worked on problems every night. Remember in the desk in the corner with the little lamp? Yeah. It was like a dark room but the yes. lamp next to the thing. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was really, those are really cool memories. We did tons of word problems, like erase it and draw the line straighter, like you introduced <laughs> me. I remember those things, like you introduced me to like trying to seek out and do a, a better way of the problem, like do my best, like have pride in what I do. Yeah, I remember things like put your name on it, have pride in what you put your name wow. at the top. And I say those things to the students. And... Uh, oh and now look where we are. <laughs> Could you ever in your wildest dreams think that we'd be recording a math lesson for maybe thousands of people no. all over the world? It's wonderful. Yeah, no. it's a totally... No, it's I a, never did. Yeah, that, like yeah. I, who would ever imagine that this is what it would lead to? So thanks for that. Yeah, so let's, ha let's do a full circle. Let's, okay. let's teach math maybe the other way around. Yeah. And as you're an engineer, right. retired engineer, right. world class. So it'll be fun to see what kind of algebra stuck, you know? So no pressure. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. You want to say yay math? One, two, three. Yay, yay math! math! All right, <laughs> rocking, cool. Okay, so this is called solving one-step equations. Basically, the idea is um, you can do all of these in one step, officially. But what happens a lot with kids, and you can imagine if they're in class, they get so caught up with algebra that they forget to use common sense. So that's why it's perfect that you're here because we, you're, you're of a logical side, a problem solving side. So I know that maybe looking at some of these, you can solve them with common sense and then we'll do algebra as much as possible. All right, so let's, let's see how it goes. So this is a number plus nine is 20. Can you think of that number? 11. 11, right, right. So X is 11. Now, can you pretend because 11 plus nine is 20. Can you pretend if you didn't know what X was, what application you would need to do to both sides of the equation to get X by itself? Yeah, I, I would think of it as a scale. This yeah. is one side and this is the other side. Right, scale, got you. Yeah. So uh, I have a X plus a nine Ounces. pound weight. Yeah, yeah. And it's equal 20. So if I take nine pound off of this side, yeah. I have to take nine pounds off of that side. Right. So that would make it balanced. Balanced. It would still balance. Yes. Right. Yes. So it doesn't matter what we do as long as we do it to both sides. Right. Right. A reminder that algebra means to restore and rebalance in Arabic. Oh, beautiful. To restore and rebalance. So that's the literal definition of algebra. And so, yes, pretending we didn't know um, that X was 11, we take off nine ounces on this side of the scale and nine off this side of the scale, the balance is returned. So it's equal, like if you take off nine off this side, it would go like that, right? right. And right. then you take nine off that and it would go back to middle. Right. And nine, plus nine minus nine goes to zero, leaving X, 20 minus nine is 11, nice. So what's the opposite function of minus nine, mathematically? No, that. Oh, you wanna give me the answer? Well, I can give you the answer. What's the answer? I'm just thinking 29. 29. But the answer, you know, is interesting that when you have a number yep. on this side, when it goes to the other side, it changes the right. sign. Right. That's how you balance it. Right. You have to counteract what's over here to right. cancel it. Right. So that's the question I ask students all the time. What do we need to do to both sides to get X by itself? And the fancy word for getting X by itself is isolate, right? So we'll put that down. I want to isolate the variable. And the image that I have in my mind about isolating the variable, this is the variable, that's the thing we don't know, right? And um, think of it like X is at a party and X is kind of being a jerk and everyone wants, everyone's like, uh, 
it's like getting away, you know? Awesome. Like, uh, uh, X is just sort of like passive aggressive. So let's go to the kitchen, right? So what would we need to do to both sides to get X by itself? Yeah, plus nine. Plus nine, good job. So let's ramp it up here. Minus nine plus nine cancels. 20 plus nine, like you said, is 29. All right, do you know the answer? It's 20 over nine. 20 over nine is correct. And what if you, does that simplify in any way, first of all? Like, can you simplify that fraction? Not really. Very good, so we'll leave it alone as improper. What do we do need to do to both sides? That's opposite times nine. Divide it. Divide by nine, that's right. Don't worry, we'll challenge you. <laughs> nine over nine is one. We got a lot to do. So 20 over nine, very good. Can you think of a number such that when you divide it by nine, the result is 20? 80. 80. Nine, nine, 20 times nine. One, 180. 180, there you go, yeah. there you go. Okay, so. Uh, X is indeed 180. And now, what is the opposite function of divided by 9? So we multiply both sides by 9. Exactly. So like you said, to isolate X, we need to do the opposite function, right? So divided by 9, opposite of that is times. What is 9 divided by 9? 1. 1, there you go. So it's like 1. 1X, one whatever you do to one side, we do to the other. Same with the scale. If you multiplied one side's weight by nine and multiplied the other side's weight by nine. Balance, good. You would that confuse everybody if I said the way we did it. Oh, what'd you do? Well, boy, like back in Iran. Like this yeah, is, what'd you do? No, you put 20 over one. Right? A lot of people do that, yes. 20 over one, and now you cross multiply. Nine times ah. 20 equal x times one. Yes, you're allowed to cross multiply whenever you have two fractions equal to each other. It's a great method. Yeah, and it's also beneficial for when you have complex fractions like x minus 1 over 3 equals 2x plus 1 over 6 or something like that. This would be great cross multiplication time, right? right. Because it's like, I don't, could you do this in your head? Uh, this is 2 times 4x plus 1 equals x minus 1. So Are you doing algebra in your head or yes. are you using logic in your head? Right, so that's doing algebra, right? This was in your head, you knew that a number plus 9 was 20, that number would have to be 11. So what I'm getting at, I don't want you to do it, I don't want you to do it. <laughs> because I know that you can do algebra, and this is a ratio, and then there's another video that covers how to do ratios itself. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And it might, yeah, it might not even make sense, that's right. true. Where is this? So, but that's a good cross multiplication would be, yeah, these two multiplied is the same as these two multiplied. That's okay. true. But this is the idea of like what I'm trying to encourage is to not get carried away with process, uh -huh. you know, and just like logically speaking, opposite function is times, and we know what 20 times 9 is. It's 2 times 9, which is 18, with a 0, right? In your opinion, in your opinion, based on your schooling and just as a citizen, do you think that uh, students should be obligated to solve problems in certain ways? No. They should just get the right answer? They should get the right answer. But, you, you know, if you practice a lot, a lot, a lot, yeah. you get very good at it. Right. And it just comes to you naturally. Right. So it's just a practice thing. Right. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't think we should test methods. I think we should test results. Right. You know? And explain yourself. That would be good, too. Right. right. Two-thirds of a number is 12. I saw you looking at it. What number? Oh. Multiply times 3. Ah, interesting. Divided by 2. So do you know two-thirds? of some number, what that number four. would have to be? Two. Is two-thirds of four equal to 12? No, okay. two is eight, is it three, yeah. This is great, this is great. What, what two-thirds of what? Three times 12 is... Uh, okay, eight, so you're doing six, the math. Seven, 18? Let's do the math, let's eight, do it, so. Oh yeah, 18, two-thirds of number, if it's 12, then it's 18. Nice, so right. you use the algebra to help you. Right. That was really cool. And this is the point, thank goodness for algebra. Thank goodness, because if you're like, well, two-thirds of what? You could start to say, well, I need a number bigger than 12, because two-thirds of it, right? Two-thirds of something, like bang, bang, bang. This is one way to do it visually. Here's thirds, like chocolate, right? And then you have two-thirds of it, one, two, right? 
this is 12. So what would each of these have to be? Six, six right, and yeah. six and six, right? So the whole number is 18. So this would be using some sort of visual aid for people that like to learn visually. But in, if that doesn't occur to us, totally, how do we solve this in one step? Guess. You divide both sides by three, you know. And then, by, well. By actually six. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> this is awesome. This is so great. Yeah, like now you have a lot of empathy for kids that are like learning, and, and even adults learning this. You know, if you, we don't know it, um, we, we can learn it. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you. How did we get rid of divided by nine? Multiplied by nine. Cool. What do we multiply by here first? By three, two, three third. Ah. Three, three, three halves. Three. Good job. Yeah, three. You could say that too. Yeah. Yeah, that's doing it in one step. Could you have done it in two steps? As sure. in, yeah. But we're trying for one. Just, yeah, multiply by three on both sides. And then divided once that's gone, and then divide by two on the three, next round. Right. right. Undo, undo. Oh, I can't, I can't undo. <laughs> I would love undo right now. There, undo is my fingers. Okay, there we go. So yeah, let's do it in one step. Multiply by three over two. This fancy word is called a reciprocal, right? And you multiply by the fraction or the number that basically cancels everything. Um, notice blue over here, blue over here, yes? Boom, so three and three cancels to one. 2 and 2 cancels to 1. This isn't just being formal about it. You don't really always have to do that. This is over 1. You know about this? Yeah. What does 12 become? 6. 6. 2 becomes? Is it 1? 1. Very, yeah, exactly. 2 and 12 divide into 6 and 1. Multiplying fractions, 6 times 3. None other than 18. Beautiful. Okay, doing great. Negative three times what is 12? You got energy? You're, yeah, you, yeah, it's you, four, minus four. Minus four, good. How would you do it in one step if you didn't know that? We can divide both sides by minus three. That's right, divide both sides by minus three. These go. Negative three over itself. A positive divided by a negative is always? Negative. Very good, yeah, 12 over three is four. Whoa, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some people find this intimidating. I had a... One of my first mentor uh, teachers, a department chair, Kathy Edwards is her name, um, when her students said, I hate fractions, Miss mm, Edwards, I hate fractions, Miss Edwards. <laughs> she would say, and she was serious, she would say, you need to write an apology letter to fractions uh. and <laughs> claim how sorry you are for hating fractions your whole life. Fractions is very hurt. <laughs> they would do it, ninth grade kids. They're like, dear Fractions, <laughs> I'm sorry for hating you for so long. It's sort of a healing process. Fractions are just numbers. Um, now, what would we do to both sides? We could uh, subtract uh, three, two over three. Two over three, right, to get x by itself. Good job. Um, but then we'll need to deal with this. Right. So because it's um, difficult, it's not straightforward to subtract um, fractions that don't, don't have common denominators. Right. So we're going to make that common, common denominator. Now, uh, what would you like the denominators to be with 2 and 3 already it there? Be 6. 6, yeah. bravo. All right. So can you make this as an improper? How many halves in 1 and a half? 3. 3 over 2, that's right. So if you had 1 and a half pizzas... That's three halves of pizza. One and a half is three halves. One, two, three. Good job. And then how many sixths is that? Times what? I want to make it six, like you said. That's what we... Four... Three... Multiply by three top and bottom? Right. Yes, multiply by three top and bottom. Very good. Top becomes three times three? Nine. Nine, good job. Two times three? Six. Six. Yeah. There's nine over six. Okay. And then let's make this into six as well. So multiply top and bottom of this by what number so that the three becomes a six? Two. Two, good. Very nice. Multiply across. This is negative four. And then 3 times 2, indeed, is 6. So now we're dealing with this pink stuff. 
Nine, six, minus four, six. How many left? Two, five, six. Five, six. Good job. Okay. So uh, I'm really not, not happy that you're here. So you're happy. Right. Good. Good. Very good. Yes. Very good. So that's called the double negative. To subtract a negative becomes what? Positive. Positive. Bravo. So this isn't officially a step. This is a simplification. Like we haven't done anything to the scale, in other words. Right. Do what to both sides? Minus 7. What's so the opposite? Plus op 7 here. Ye, ye. Plus 7 there. Plus 7. Good. Yeah. So this is plus 7 here. Plus 7 here. And these go. And what's negative 12 plus negative, 7? Negative 5. Negative 5 indeed. So we got x equals negative 5. Last one on this particular brand. I don't know it, but do you know 3 and a half of what thing is 6? No. I don't know. Uh, oh, he's trying. Okay. Four. You're trying? Okay, so 3 and a half of something smaller than 6. Right, because you have like this thing. This thing. Three and a half of it. So thing, 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 half of thing. Three and a half of thing is six. Ah, that's hard. That's hard, yeah. That's hard. That's, that's, uh... It's a fraction, clearly. Right. We, and we've apologized to fractions. <laughs> so we're on good terms now. Very good. We're congenial. Yeah. Suggestions? Six divided by 3.5, something like that. Right. Now, is that convenient for you? Six divided by 3.5. If you divide both sides by 3.5. Let me get my calculator. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, no, that's, not, that's not a crime. That's <laughs> not a crime. You know, some people are like, oh, I need my calculator. Just do it. They, they're like talking into the phone. What's 6 divided by 3.5? So that technology is there, and people can use it. That's cool. I wonder if there's a way we can craft this using fractions instead of decimals. There's Improper. 3.5. Improper. Can you turn that into an improper fraction, as a single fraction? As in, how many halves oh, is three? Seven. Yes. Can you do that mathematically? Three times what? Three times two what, what? is six plus one is seven. Did you remember that all the way from school back in the day day? Uh -huh. Or did you do that in your head? Like, like, how did you know to do that? Did you just remember? I remember, you know, we did it, we did it forever. You we, did it ad nauseum. Yeah, we, we would solve hundreds of problems. Hundreds, yeah. Just like yeah, drill, it, drill, drill. It never drill. goes away. Yeah. yeah, drill, 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 drill. Do you think that's a good learning method? That, that yeah, I, kind I of get, it's more I don't traditional know, yeah. method. I always was pretty good in math. I had no fear of it because of that. Right. Because it was drilled in me so hard. Drill, lots of work. Yes. Lot, lot, volume, high volume. And, yeah. That's interesting. And you begin to like it, actually. When you yeah. see the problem, you can solve it so easily, you begin to like it. Right, right. Yeah. Yes. So you don't you remove the stigma because they're right, getting good right, at it now. Right, right. Get some momentum. Yeah, a lot of people are into that. They, they find beauty in the grind, right? They call that. They grind and they grind and they grind and then they find beauty at the other end of that work. Yeah. Multiply both sides by what? By 2 over 7. Bravo. Reciprocal. And yeah. Clearly, as we both know, it was obvious all along, if some people like to multiply fractions like that, what's the result? 12 over 7. Of course, that was what I was, I was going to say that, 12 over 7. <laughs> so that's, that was the tip of my tongue. Okay, congratulations. That was solving equations with one step.